the documentary Planet of the Humans. It was produced by Academy Award winner Michael Moore and it was removed from YouTube. That stirred up a media firestorm about the movie. So YouTube removed the documentary briefly due to allegations of copyright infringement. But new reporting from the Gray Zone actually suggested the documentary may have faced a coordinated hit campaign led by some professional climate activists and green billionaires. So Michael, just tell us about just the saga of having this thing removed from YouTube, who you suspect was behind it and what all of it really represents about the message that you were trying to portray in the first place. Well, I didn't know a lot of what was going on to try to censor and remove the film until I read this article it came out last week uh, by Max Blumenthal, who many of us know is a, a really important investigative uh, journalist. And he has his own site uh, called the, uh, uh, the Gray Zone. And I read it the same as everybody else read it last week, and it was stunning to see the effort put forth by people, people, some people that we admire, but um, who, because we had pointed out in the film their connections to uh, billionaires and Wall Street that was trying to take over the environmental movement and fund it, and they have taken over large chunks of it. And, and some of our environmental leaders are and have been beholden uh, to them. So this is what the film shows. And obviously they didn't like that. And so uh, this incredible, I was saying 9,000 word investigative piece shows what was going on behind the scenes to pull a planet of the humans down uh, off of my YouTube channel. After it already had had eight or nine million views it's now around 12 million there on YouTube and other other sites. 12 million views of this film, and this was and after all the attacks on the film, more millions of people kept watching it. Now the and the attacks were, as this article points out, were all um, false and wrong, and and people just lied about the movie, which was. I didn't expect this. I mean, I knew people would be upset because what we were saying was that after 50 years after the first Earth Day, where are we? Is the environment better? Is the Earth safer? No. We all know that's not true. You know, a dozen years ago, we were told if we went past 350 parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere, there'd be no way to reverse it. Now we're at 420 parts per million of carbon. So we're in deep deep shit and and the we went about trying to figure out why is that and why have our environmental groups not all of them but some of them failed us and sure enough sadly it's the same old story of once the do re mi is introduced uh people start doing what the people who give them money want them to do and and so it's a tough film to watch because you don't want to believe this about uh, the Sierra Club or things like this. And yet we lay it all out, all factually supported everything. And this article by Max Blumenthal backs, backs up everything the film is saying. And it, 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 it just was so stunning to me because I was hoping at least for the film. And I'm not the director. Jeff Gibbs is the director. But um, I think our hope was that we could start a conversation because we we're losing the planet. We're losing the battle, and um, and billionaires, uh, the Elon Musk's and the and the Bloomberg's uh, and others have sort of tried to take control of this movement, and we wanted to cry foul, and to hope to start a conversation with the people that we are obviously in agreement with. Because, but what I learned from this is that the difference between I guess our environmentalism. You know, I was there at the first Earth Day, 1970. Don't mean to date myself, <laughs> but I've been an environmentalist my whole life. And um, but I think the differences between our form of environmentalism and what we're criticizing in the film is that we believe that one of the enemies of of what's happening to our planet is greed, capitalism, and and there are people that we love and admire in the environmental movement that are not anti-capitalism. They think capitalism is going to save us. We just make some more technology and we'll fix the earth. But that's not the case. And I just I want to say this too, that 
you know, we've had 50 or 60 years, 70 years of the civil, 70 years of the civil rights movement, almost 70 years, uh, uh, 60 years of the anti-war movement, 50 plus years of the feminist movement. Um, and I think you can safely say that while we are nowhere near where we need to be, that we have made advances with all these, all these movements were good and they, and it, all these movements move the ball uh, down uh, the field. We're not there yet, but you cannot say this about the environmental movement. We have not moved the ball down the field. The ball is back in the end zone. We are, we are in worse shape 50 years after Earth Day. And so we wanted to make a film so we would have this discussion uh -huh. because Greta Thunberg is right, being mad at the adults for handing her generation this planet in the shape that it's in. Never should have happened this way. But I think that a lot of our environmental groups and some of our environmental leaders lost their way. And we stopped fighting in the way we needed to fight. Had we, when Jimmy Carter put those first solar panels on the roof of the White House in 1979, and we started then, well, what is that, 40 years ago, 41 years ago? We lost 41 years because yeah. Reagan yeah. came in the next year. Reagan tore down the solar panels, and, and, and we have not won this fight in, in, these, in these 40 or, well, or 50 years. Well, and, Michael, let me ask you. Cause the the film, and that's what upset the people that are taking millions and millions of dollars from the Bloombergs, uh, from and, the Elon and, Musks. From the and let me ask Brand you. Let me yeah. ask you because the the new the innovation in the environmental movement is really the framework of the Green New Deal, right? And the idea is transition to renewable energy and creating a lot of new jobs to support that industry. So there's a just transition involved. That's the big innovation in the environmental movement. How does that fit alongside the critique, the sort of anti-capitalist critique too, which is at the center of this documentary, but also critique specifically of quote unquote renewable energy and their dependence on dirty processes, including a lot of, you know, mineral mining. Again, I don't want to bum people out because everybody's bummed out enough during this pandemic and, and with who we've got in the White House. But it may be too late. And everybody's afraid to say that. That renewables, like again, if we'd done that 40 or 50 years ago, full force, maybe. But it's too late at this point to pull ourselves back from that 420 carbon mark. It's gone. And so now, now what do we do? Here's the thing. You cannot build a single, single solar panel without fossil fuels. You cannot build a single windmill without fossil fuels. So right there, now they'll say, well, yes, but that'll use less fossil fuels, driving the electric car is better than driving the gasoline car. Yes, to a point, but all the minerals that they have to mine and all the fossil fuels they have to use to build that electric car, eventually, we all know, it's why we call it non-renewable, we're going to run out of it. So this is, if it's just a temporary plan we're working on, I would at least like us, some group, some of us, to start working on the long range plan because the short range plan will not get us till the next century because it relies on fossil fuels. So the other this, critique, this Michael- never gets discussed. Yes. The other critique is basically like, essentially kind of what you're alluding to, like that's very depressing. It makes people feel like there's nothing they can do, like we're defeated, like there's no direction to go in. What is your response to that criticism that it's like, it's sort of too nihilistic? No, we have to just, we just have to buck up. That, yes, it is depressing, but we, we have to stop doing things that do, we do it just because it makes us feel good. I recycle, you know, my soda bottles because it makes me feel good. I've done something for the environment today. I haven't really done anything. I mean, at the grand scope of where we're at now, the grand failure of our environmental efforts in these last 50 years, it's, it's, I would rather just like, I know, like on my podcast, I, I'll, I have on these people from Columbia and Harvard and the CDC, well, not them anymore, uh, NIH. And they say right on my podcast, this is a three to four year pandemic. A three to, who wants to hear that? Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. But you know what? I would 
actually rather hear the truth. And if that's the truth, if you're telling me it's a four year pandemic, then I can now start today trying to figure out with myself and with everybody else, okay, let's say it is four years, four years till we have a real vaccine. Oh, you know, mumps I think is the quickest vaccine we've ever come up with. That took four years. So let's say it's four years. At least we can start to deal with it. At least we can start to figure out maybe there's a different way for us to get through this, a different way to do schooling, a different way to do, at least have the conversation because if we just keep putting our heads in the sand, oh Mike, don't tell me it's four years. Don't tell me it takes fossil fuels to make a windmill. You know, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? And look, this is, you. anybody watching this, if you've watched my films over the years, I've done, I've made movies now for 30 years, 31 years. Um, I know in all these films, I've said things that are just crushing. But if I don't say them, then we keep going the same way and nothing gets fixed. So I'm sorry to be the, the, the Debbie Downer of this, but um, I try in my films to put enough humor in there so it, the medicine goes down a little easier. But, but guys, let me tell you, this is not, we're in very bad shape. And I want, I want everybody to see this film. I mean, the reaction to the film has been incredible from the people who've seen it. And if they watch Planet of the Humans, all they got, it's free. Just go on Michael Moore's YouTube channel. There it is. Look for the official, official movie. Mm -hmm. Well, it's and an important message, you Michael. Will be, I mean, it's only 90 minutes, and you will be stunned at the end of the movie. And But don't be paralyzed by it. We all can, we can still figure this out. It's, I mean, I know we got, we're out of time, but I just, let me just close with this analogy. This is how I, I viewed every one of my films and how I view life. It's like we're, we're, you know, we're in a, we're in a, a, a lifeboat and there's a leak and it's taking on a lot of water and we're all going to drown. We're all going to die. Every one of us in the lifeboat. But I see a, a Dixie cup, a little cup, a little paper cup over there in the corner. And, and I'm thinking, well, I, I should start bailing the water out with this Dixie cup. But the, the problem with that is, is that I know the laws of physics. That little cup is not enough to get all this water out. We're going to die. But if the Dixie cup is sitting there, what would you do? Would you just sit there and let the boat go down? Mm -hmm. Or would you pick it up, even though you know you're not going to save yourself? You'd pick it up, wouldn't you? Because here's what happens with us human beings. You start picking it up and you're bailing and you're bailing and you look like a crazy man. But, but then there, but then there's there was a, a guy sitting on the other end of the rowboat, of the lifeboat, and he takes off his ball cap and he starts bailing with the ball cap. Then there's a woman over in the other corner and she's got a bag and out of the bag she pulls out her plastic 3D printer and she prints she prints a scoop and she starts. And then the other per and then suddenly everybody in the lifeboat is coming up with their genius idea which even, none of those on their own would ever bail enough water to save everybody. But if everybody came up with these new ideas and started doing them, we have a chance to live and survive. Yeah. That's, the, yeah. that's the optimistic end of that story, but it, it requires all of us to do our part. And for those who have gotten into bed with Wall Street and corporate America and, and, and these billionaires, we just have to say thank you for all your good work you did over the years. You've done whatever you've had to do for whatever reasons you had to, but we have to save this goddamn planet.